will talk about interactive graphic for visually diagnosing forest uh, classifiers in R. This is a joint work with Dai Kok and Un Kyun Lee. And the structure will be, I will go over the motivation, I will explain what is PP forest, that means uh, projection pursuit random forest. I will go over what uh, we did in the exploration for this ensemble learning method and I will finish with some comments. Uh, well, PP forest is a new supervised method based on back projection pursuit trees for classification problems. And this method improves the predicted performance of a random forest when we have classes that can be separated by linear combination of variables. But sometimes these kind of models are called black box, mo black box models uh, because we don't know what is going on inside. Then we need tools to discover um, and open this kind of black box models um, and that kind of tool will provide us a better understanding of our data, what are the, the strengths of our model and what are the weakness and maybe with some of these tools we can modify our model or go back and forth. Um, well, uh, in general, an ensemble learning method combines multiple individual models uh, trained in an independent way, and at the end, we are building a predict uh, prediction model. Some of the very common and well-known ensemble learning methods are boosting, bagging, and random forest. And the main difference between all these methods is uh, are, uh, we are combining uh, the type of model that we, we are using and the way that we are combining these different type of, of um, uh, individual models. Um, well, uh, this is the thing that is making noise. Chin, chin, chin. Okay, it's me. I have to stay calm. <laughs> okay, but I don't know if I can do that. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe here. I don't know. <laughs> there are two main concepts in the same way that we have in random forest, that is bootstrap, um, bootstrap aggregation and random future selection, that these are the key points that make uh, the forest uh, include randomness in our forest, uh, in the same way that in random forest. And the individual classifier that we are using in our ensemble learning method is a kind of PP3 that is a previous work of work of Un Kyun Lee. Uh, and this um, PP3, uh, the particular thing that we are having here is we are using a linear combination of variables in each node partition and that take into account the, cor the, the correlation between variables in the in the forest construction. And then, uh, then PP3, that is the individual model that we are using in this forest, um, use uh, combined projection pursuit methods and um, um, tree structure method with projection uh, pursuit reduction. And we, uh, this individual tree treats always the data in uh, a two-class system. If we have more than two classes, then we will have two steps uh, and um, um, two, uh, two steps to get our partition. I will show like a, like uh, with a, this diagram. Imagine that we have three classes. Then, in the first step, we are trying to find the the one-dimensional projections. Uh, of our data. After that, we have a second step that we will compute the mean of each of the groups that we have. And based on this information, we will convert the problem in a two-class problem, okay? Based on the distance that we have in this, um, between the means. And after that, we begin again, one-dimensional projection and so on. And only as an example that you can see the difference between the individual trees that we are using in our uh, forest. Uh, in random forest, uh, it's like the image that we have on the, the pen of, you know, the card one, where in this class we have three, mm, three, uh, 
three classes and then we can observe that the partitions are horizontal or ver vertical in this case, but in the case of PP3, the, the, the partitions are linear combination of variables. Then in this case, we can see that we are uh, with PP3, uh, for this particular example, we are separating better this problem. The model is uh, better for this kind of example. Then, what the PP4S is doing is using this individual model. We have the training data set. At the end, we are taking bootstrap samples. And for each bootstrap sample, we are constructing a PP3. And the difference, is, the difference here is the second level of randomness because we are selecting a subset of random variable in each node partition. And after that, we will have the prediction for each, each of the trees. And at the end, to get the prediction of our for us, we will use the, um, the um, majority vote. Okay, uh, well, this, I, I will not talk about the package. We have the package on CRAN, and the first time uh, we did the package uh, with, uh, only with R, and then was not fast enough, and we uh, used two strategies of optimization. We used translate the main functions to RCPP and use parallelization, and right now it's faster than before, but we always can improve that kind of things. Uh, okay, I am going right now to focus on the visualization part, and in PP forest, in the same way that in random forest, we, we have different kind of diagnostic that we can check to understand better our model, and some of them are the out of bag error rate, we can also check the important variables that we can, compu we can compute the important variables in different ways. We have information about proximity matrix and also information about bone matrix. Then in this, uh, the, the, the thing that we are showing right now is how we can use all that diagnostic and visualize to have more information about our uh, model. Uh, we, we, I will show how we can structure the data and construct plot to explore our uh, forest classifier. And basically, we have three levels uh, in this analysis. The first level will be individual case level, at observational level. We will have the second level will be the individual model that in this case are trees, the PP trees that we are using as individual model. And finally, we will have the performance comparison between PP forest and random forest. And one of the key parts of this exploration is that we are using interactive graphics, and I will show you an interactive way base to make our exploration. What is an interactive graphic? Uh, are, mm, there are two important key points that we have to take into account uh, and should be accomplished for an in to have a graphic that is interactive. First, in each of the, plot, in each of the uh, individual plots, we need to see, uh, be able to have interaction. For example, when we are mousing over, maybe we will have additional information about the, plot, the points that we are looking. And, and a second and very important one is we want links between the different visualizations that we are doing, and maybe that part is not always easy, but Carson has a lot of solutions that make our life very easily. Um, and why we should use interactive graphics? Because we can, we can be able to see connections and things that in other way will be very difficult using uh, a static uh, visualization. Um, okay, then for example, in the three levels that I, I mentioned before, if we are checking um, the first level, that is the individual level, that maybe can uh, give us information about if we are doing wrong in some specific point, or maybe in our case that we are doing classification. Maybe we have some class that, uh, that is more difficult than other, and maybe we can use that information to transform our model. In the second level, uh, we can identify individual models, and that second level can be very useful and important to, for example, prune our forest. I will show you uh, the later something. Um, and the last level is only to make a comparison between performance. Uh, in this case, I use only random forest to make the comparison. I will go over a small example to show you how this interactive visualization works. We have 
159 observations from fish catch data. We have seven species, that is our uh, variable of interest, the, and we have uh, all the um, explanatory variables are kind of measure of the fish, like weight, length, or something like that. Then, uh, in the first level of, of analysis here, we have like the, what are the individual visualizations that we select and how these visualizations are connected. As I said, said before, the, interactive, the interactivity has two important things. The first one is we, we want in, uh, information uh, in each of the individual plots that we are using and also we want some kind of connection. And then uh, um, here we are only using information of some of the diagnostic that we have. For example, here we have the data. In this one we have information about the bulb matrix. Here we have information about the um, proximity matrix and also in here, and I will go over this uh, example. Uh, and what these lines mean is like, we, when we select or click in some of these visualizations, the data will change and all the, the plots will be updated when I am doing some kind of selection and that will be the link between the different visualizations that I have. Then, uh, how this is an interactive graphics. Uh, I will show you only in this example the individual plots that we have in that first level of analysis and after that I will show you the, the, um, the web application. And how we make this very easily because Carson has that amazing package Plotly and then we, uh, we have a ggplot object in a very easy way using ggplotly we can get an interactive graphic like this. This is a parallel coordinate plot where we each line represent one observation and in this case the color represent the class and we can describe our, our data based on the information that we have here. For example, we can say that this fish smell, the yellow one, are similar in this variable but maybe this other one is more, there are more variability here. And by default, the, the information that appears in the label uh, are the aesthetics that we have in our uh, ggplot uh, object. And I lose the time. <laughs> okay. And this is a the, the information of a proximity matrix uh, using multidimensional scaling. And what is the information that we can extract from here? We want to see that our model is doing well, for example, predicting this class, this class, but maybe we are identifying in this case that we are having troubles with, with, this, with this particular class, this white fish. And uh, another uh, thing that we can visualize is the bulb matrix. We have two ways to visualize the bulb matrix. This is a shitter side by side uh, dot plot. And what we want to see here, what uh, I can identify if my model is doing okay or not. What is the information that we have in our matrix? In, it, in each row, we, we have the, um, the observation, and in each column, we have the proportion of time that that particular observation was classified in each of the classes, then the thing that I want to see, to say that my model is doing okay, I, I want to see like a very concentrated uh, green ones here, no, because it's green, that means that most of the time I am classifying this as the correct class, but I can say that my model is having troubles to classify this one, in the same way that we saw in the multidimensional scaling. And this can give us information about which are the problematic classes for our model and maybe we can do something special for that particular class. Another way to see the bulb matrix information will be a uh, ternary plot. When we have more than three classes, ternary plots are useful to see uh, compositional data, but when we have more than three classes, we need a generalization. In this case, we have seven classes, then we have a uh, simplex uh, of six dimensions. And what I want to see here to say that my, my model is doing great is I want to see not mixed colors and all the colors I want to be in the corners, in the vertex. And then, I, again, I can say, ah, this is, uh, my model is, predicting okay the pack is predicting okay this one, but maybe I am having a lot of troubles uh, 
here because are across and there are a lot of mixed color. Then I combine, I will show you this, uh, the in the first level, I can, as I told you, uh, each one is in, uh, interactive, but also the, all the, the plots there are connected. If I am doing a selection or, or a click, because maybe I want to identify why this observation has some particular characteristic, all the other uh, plots are updated, and then I can characterize the, the data, and this is like uh, a small example where we are seeing the, the model in the data space. Okay. And in the second level, we have the individual model, and in this case, the individual model is a tree. And then here we have information about the importance variable, uh, and we have, uh, we can select one specific tree and everything will be updated. I will see the structure for that particular tree. I can see where is that tree in terms of error in all our forest. And also I can see how will be uh, uh, the partitions. Here I have the one dimensional projection for each of the nodes. And I can identify, for example, sick trees. And this can be a useful uh, tool to identify which trees are not good in my forest and maybe use that information to prune the, tree, the, the forest. That maybe will be a, a tool for that. And yes, and uh, as I tell you, uh, if I select one of the particular trees in here, I, everything will be updated and I will see how that tree is uh, working. And I don't know how many minutes do I have. Uh, okay. Um, Finally, is the performance comparison. In that um, last uh, part, we, ha we are comparing the performance of PP forest with random forest. And we have, for example, the rock curve. We have the cumulative error and also the important variables. And we can change, for example, we want to see, for example, if our model is working better with some particular class and observe only that information in, our, in this tab. And finally, uh, as final comments, I think that uh, having better tools to open the black box models will be useful to see and understand what our model is doing, and maybe we can go back and forth and change part of our model. This visualization uh, app provides a selection of some interactive plots for, to diagnostic PP forest, but can be extended to other ensemble methods. Um, and finally, uh, something very important. Uh, uh, when we are combining Shiny, ggplot, and Plotly, I think this is a very powerful tools combined to make explorations and understand our models better. And if you want to see something else, we have uh, the working paper there that it maybe will be more clear uh, if you read what I am saying. Yeah, I have the slides also, and also if you want to play with the example that I have, uh, you can go to that, and that is the information, and if you have any question, uh, you can ask me. Maybe one quick question while we get set up. Yeah. That are the, you, um, uh, she's asking me about the explanatory variables that I have in fish, in the fish, but are all different measures, are from the na noise, na <laughs> nose to the tail and things like that, are all related with weight, height and things like that, but are not the same ones. No. No, different measures, different lengths. 